Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today what we're going to do is take a look at my opinion the top six coolest features coming in Godot 4.5. If you're not aware of this right now, there have been a number of beta releases going on. We're in feature free, so beta 3 is now available, Godot uh, 4.5 is just around the corner. So again, we're going to take a look at some of the coolest new features, at least as far as my opinion goes. So here you can see this is Godot 4.5 this is a sample scene from um, uh, an available Godot bundle from Lurtes. It's down in the comments down below. Make sure you use the code if you buy it, by the way. It discounts the price massively. It's just here to give us a little eye candy when we go through the top features in this release. Once again, this is Godot 4.5 Beta 3. We are not getting new features in each of these betas. We're just getting bug fixes and closer and closer to a final release. So what is exciting in this new release? Well, the favorite thing I think for me is actually pretty small. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to load up the world environment here. I'm going to show you something right away. So we've got a variety of different uh, things here. So for example, here I'm using fog. And you're going to see here with it enabled, it now expands out. I'm not using glow or sign distance field global illumination or SSIL or SAO or any of those things at all. So what you're going to notice is only things that you're actually using expand out. So if I start using sign distance field, for example, and then it will then go ahead and expand out the options that are available. I love this collapsing feature over in the inspector this combined with the favorites pinning from a previous release uh, which by the way you could do via uh, a right click of any properties and you can favorite it those two features are just little quality of life things that make just a massive improvement in the way uh, things work and now another thing we've got going on and we've had a number of updates around this over the last couple releases is the embedded game window so what you do when you go ahead and run your game right now so go ahead we'll run this game and here you can see this is the game window you can expand it out by the way have it floating or you can embed it like I have done here well now what you've got the ability to do first off is you've got the ability to run this on Mac OS there was no support for the embedded game window on Mac until 4.5 but on top of that now what you can do is you can actually pick things in the world so you see here we have this mesh instance loaded all the properties are available there but now what I can do is actually shift click so I could select multiples there. Uh, and now we could go ahead and do neat things to them. For example, here I could play with their scale on the Y axis. There you can see. Now this is uh, experimental only. So when I stop running the game, uh, this, the changes that I've made will actually revert. So again, over here, I click this, it will go away. Before I do that though, I wanna show one other new feature that they've added right here. And that is this guy right here. You can actually mute the game audio while playing. So the new button added there. So the game embed window has gotten just so much better and again, on Mac, it actually exists now, which again is an important new feature. So you're going to see here when I stop this, uh, we're going to go look at those two uh, guys right over here. You're going to notice they're normal sized again. Uh, so it's going to give you the ability to inspect your game world, but one of the new features that they've added here is that ability to multi-select objects. And again, it's going to do it based off of the type that's selected. So you're going to notice here when I selected two of the same object, we got, oops, there. Actually, what I was going to demonstrate in a second, I just did. So here we got two of the same objects. It identifies them both as being mesh instances 3D. But if I grab something else, so here's a node 3D, for example, you only get the least common denominator. So you can see here, it only has node 3D because that's the only thing that all three of these objects had. So when you multi-select, it, it gives you based off of what they have in common. Again, a really cool feature if you want to like prototype a bunch of changes to objects in your scenes, you can now do multi-select with the embedded game window. So I very much like that feature. Now the next one isn't going to be that sexy to showcase here uh, because it's literally just a checkbox. But when you are exporting out now, uh, so if you've got your platform set up, there is now this new option here for Shader Baker. And this is actually going to pre-compile all or pre-build all of your shaders. And this is especially important on Direct3D 12 and for Metal on Mac OS. And you do that, it is going to speed up uh, your startup times up to like 20 times. Also could potentially get rid of some of the hiccups. Now this isn't completely free though. If you turn on Shader Baker, this guy right here, it is going to make your build process quite a bit slower because it's going to have to compile all of those shaders. It's also going to make your build bigger because it's got a bunch of compiled shaders as well. But again, it's one of those features, where I think for most people, you're going to want to turn this on. Now, kind of an honorable mention that's got nothing to do with that. If you do an export now of um, 
the uh, web. So if you're doing here and you're actually doing a web-based export, they've turned a new option on, just a um, compiled for SIMD. It has sped up web uh, builds greatly. So that's one of those nice things. If you're doing web builds with Godot, a nice new feature from Godot 4.5 is that new uh SIMD support that they've built in. It's just basically free performance, which is a very nice. Uh, and then, yeah, that's it on the 3D side of things. We've also got a change to scripting. And I've wrote this little script here to demonstrate what they've changed. We've got two changes here. The first one you're going to notice here is we have this um, extends node export var Bob Dole of type variant. You didn't used to be able to do this anymore. So now you can export out variant types. So you might wonder, okay, well, how does that actually work in the world if you do that? Well, here you can see our value. Bob Dole is a variant. All you do is you basically come up here and you tell it what you want Bob to be. So here I want to say it's a, a rectangle. I could define that and then set the properties of it accordingly. Uh, so you now have the ability to export out variants, which is cool. Although that's also kind of a ticking time bomb in my opinion. So it's going to be something you're only going to want to use if you've got a very good reason for exposing variant values to your designers. Just one of those things. It's a potential, uh, again, hand grenade that you're creating there. Another thing we've got going on right here is the abstract class. So you see here, we've got this property on here, abstract class uh, Bob. Well, why would you want to do this? Well, what it enables you to do is make it so that you can create, so var um, guy equals bob.new. So when I try and create this, what you're actually going to do is get an error. So it cannot construct abstract class Bob. So what you're doing when you declare something as abstract is you're basically providing a, a blueprint or a framework for what a class should look like. It's defining an interface for your code to work with. So here you can see here with Dole, I've extended Bob. So what I can actually do, so you can actually inherit from an extended class and that is just fine. So now that we've got that, like I say, guy, first name equals Bob, like so, and then guy dot last name equals Dole, like so. And you're perfectly fine doing this other than the fact that I'm not tabbed in. Uh, whereas you can't actually directly instance an abstract class. So it's a way of defining uh, a class for other classes to inherit from. Very cool functionality there as well. Now for the next thing, we're actually gonna have to move over into 2D. So here we are in a 2D scene. Let's switch on over here. And we've got a couple of other neat new features. Now this first one is kind of small, but I love it. So we've got here, uh, we're gonna create a label in our world and we'll call this hello world like so. So there is our new label. What we can actually do is go into label settings, create a new set of label settings, and you're going to find we now have stacked effects. So I can do stacked outlines and stacked shadow. So we're gonna add uh, an outline here. So this is, uh, let's say red. All right, so there like so, uh, oops. And then I can go ahead and make that go like so. And you can actually stack these. So again, I can add another one in here. We've got black, and then now I'm gonna make that even bigger. So there you go. And you can also do the same thing for shadows. So here we've got uh, this bluish shadow like so. And again, I set the size of it. And there you see it offsetting. So if you are working with text or labels and you wanna add some special pizzazz to them, this new ability to add stacked uh, effects is wonderful. A nice little thing, not the biggest deal that you've ever seen, but it's just one of those little quality of life things that you're going to appreciate. Now the next one here is probably in all honesty, if you're working with 2D, uh, the biggest new feature in uh, this particular release. And we're gonna go here, we created a new uh, tile map layer. And now a quick bit of setup. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new tile set. My tile is 128 by 128, like so. I'm gonna go ahead, we will have physics enabled. Come on down here. We're gonna set physics mode to force show. And then come on down here and set up our tile set. Our tile set consists of just one tile. So nothing really special going on here. An atlas, load our tile in like so. Now we'll go ahead and Yes, yes. We'll go ahead and select our tile like so. And now we're going to go down to the physics area and we're going to say over here and define our polygon for the physics collision. So we go boom and then boom and then boom and then boom and then close it. So then we can actually take these and actually put them in the corner. So now we have a physics shapes defined for our actual tile. So now we can go over here to our tile map and basically start painting with our tile. So we're going to draw mode here. Our tile map is selected. Uh, let's pick our tile 
and then draw it. Now, what you're going to notice here, see this blue outline around it? Well, that and there, that is the key detail. Let me zoom in a little bit here. What you're seeing here is now instead of having one tile wreck per tile for uh, physics collisions, you're now getting this compounded polygon. So as I keep adding new polygons in or new tiles in, it makes the polygon as small and with as few faces as possible. So again, here, keep going. If I make this basically back into a rectangle, we're going to get just a single quad defining it. Then we again start deleting some things out and you're going to notice that it gets more complicated in terms of the shape of the polygon. So now you've got this one collision polygon set instead of one per tile in your tile map. This is going to make your tile collisions so much faster. Definitely a beautiful improvement here. Again, if you are using tile maps, this new collision functionality, this new polygon uh, creation here, instead of having, again, a polygon, a polygon, a polygon, a polygon for each one of these, it's basically one polygon for your entire layer. Super powerful in terms of optimization there. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. By the way, if you're interested, uh, the level that we were looking at here is this one, the ancient cathedral part of this particular bundle. Again, the details for that bundle are available down below. Make sure you use the discount code. I don't want you to pay full price when you should be able to get something like, I don't know, 30 bucks off using the, the other code here when you check out. Uh, on top of that, here we go. This is the uh, most recent release here. So we've got beta three, which was released on July the 8th. I wouldn't be surprised we see beta four really soon. And then just basically Godot 4.5 coming soon. But those were, again, my favorite new features here. You got the shader baker, you got the collision system for tile maps, you've got all kinds of improvements for the embedded window that we saw earlier on. Uh, you've got, uh, again, a number of improvements to uh, the um, game window, uh, multiple select there, we got the shader baker, we got the export on uh, WASM exports for faster because of SIMD, stackable outlines on labels and improvements to GD script. Let me know what your favorites are. Is there stuff here that you're super excited about coming in this release? Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.